Hi, I'm Martin Childs. This is Notes on a Set for The Crown. Uh, this is episode eight of The Crown, when the Kennedys visit. The Queen is giving a tour of the palace, and this opens in the throne room, which is in Lancaster House. And this pretty good illustration of the fact that we used maybe six or seven different um, locations for the interior of Buckingham Palace. This was something we found on a location. It's a completely empty room, but we turned it into the throne room, and it's a pretty good approximation of the real throne room in Buckingham Palace. So all of this stuff here is us. And this belongs to the location. And this belongs to the location. We can't do anything about these nets here, which we would love to have removed in order to get the view beyond. But they're part of the security and they will withstand any bombing that might happen to that building. So any explosions and broken glass will be caught by those uh, net curtains, which we're not allowed to move. We had this whole thing here woven, especially for us. You know, I mean, it's so easy to kind of cheat these things and print on fabric and do things digitally. But this was actually woven, as were the, uh, the chair backs, E, R and P, Elizabeth Regina and Philip. I did a, lot of, a ton of research into Buckingham Palace itself. I did a tour of Buckingham Palace. This particular location is Lancaster House. It's perfect for the tour. It's a government building and it's therefore less perfect for staging scenes in, long dialogue scenes but it's the best location we have for representing the, what Peter Morgan called the sheer mileage of the place, and that's the sheer mileage of Buckingham Palace. It's largely empty, it belongs to the government. Uh, Theresa May has vast conferences in there. We get to use it on occasional weekends. Now, this is the picture gallery. This is my great, 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 great grandfather, George III. This is the gallery that Elizabeth takes Jackie through in order to show pictures of the ancestors and to show the huge sort of wealth of art that there is in Buckingham Palace. Only we had to use Lancaster House once again. And as I say, it's my favorite sort of traveling through set because of the scale. And a lot of the dialogue was rewritten in order to accommodate the pictures that are there because the one thing we can't do is take down their pictures, or we can at great expense, but because of the time limitations. Within this scene, you'll notice there's a cutaway to William Pitt, I think it is, and he isn't there, but it's an important part of dialogue, so he's cut away to somewhere else. Who's this? Ah, that's one of the Pitts, the younger. Named for something that's always rather endeared me to him. Crippling shyness. When you get to Lancaster House, is once again the famous security curtains at one end which again, I would love to be rid of, but I'm never allowed to. Uh, we introduce these things which are called conversation chairs, but it's bizarre because when you sit in them, you actually face away from the person you're sitting next to. So they're not great for conversation. Oh, you have to explain that one to me. Well, a shy person will seek out someone strong to protect them. This is um, Wilton House and the Queen giving Jackie Kennedy the privilege of being invited into the private drawing room. One thing I love about this is these crazy caryatids here which are these um, Greek women holding up the ceiling. They're not something I'd have put in the set. So it's just one of those great bonuses that you get from going on location. We completely refurnished it and filled it with photographs you can see here of the children, photographs of the family. Everything is kind of a photograph of these people in their youth, or it's the actors who played the Queen in flashback or played Margaret in flashback. So every one of these details could sustain a close-up. Hello, everyone. I'd like you to say hello to our guest of honor, Her Royal Highness, the Princess Margaret. Hello. 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 So here we have Margaret venturing outside royal circles for the first time. This is the Cavendish party to which she's been invited. It's impossible to work on the crown without using the royal vulgar language of these people are commoners, albeit, you know, pretty well healed um, kind of bohemian set. We have introduced reds and oranges for the first time for reasons of isn't it great to have your house painted red rather than this is what royalty looks like. Behind us is the red wall in which Tony and Margaret meet for the first time. And, and again, I can't not talk in terms other than film. Uh, I wanted something of James Stewart seeing Kim Novak for the first time in Vertigo in Ernie's with that fantastic red wall. So what we have here is we have, we're, it's our first venture into mid-century furniture. So we have these kind of rectilinear sofas and also this lamp, which is definitely part of 
you know, that kind of mid-century world, you would never get one of those in Buckingham Palace. So really it's a question of finding all the things that you love that you would never see in Buckingham Palace in order to express this one moment of her feeling like a fish out of water. And there is a discomfort in, um, in Vanessa's face when she walks into this room. And I like to think that I caused a little bit of it. Are you in the mood for some questions? It depends on the questions. I did a tour of Buckingham Palace, but the one thing you can't tour is the private apartments. There are plans of them, and I kind of adapted them to suit the drama without ever not telling the truth about them. Almost all of the private apartment stuff is completely out of my imagination, based on architectural knowledge rather than um, intimate knowledge of the Queen's life. The thing about houses of this period is that there are very few corridors in them. There's this thing called the enfilade where there is room after room after room connected by double doors and, and it's a gift to filmmakers because you can then frame within the frame and it's something that I took to whether they have them or not in the bedrooms of Buckingham Palace, it's perfectly feasible that they would have them in the bedrooms of Buckingham Palace. So I took that as a kind of way of showing the distance between Philip and Elizabeth and the significance of the coming together of Philip and Elizabeth. So what we have here is, um, it, within this frame here, is Elizabeth's bedroom behind there. And if you look at it in plan form, Elizabeth's bedroom has a bay window in it, has that, and then there is this doorway, a couple of doors there, and this is where these two are, are placed, so that you can see that doorway through there. What I did, and probably never happened on, um, in, the, in real life, is, but it works very well dramatically, is to place the bed there and there, so that you're always conscious of his distance from her, and in the tour scenes at the beginning of season two, the first three episodes, conscious of his um, absence from here, so that his absence kind of becomes a presence, if you like, um, if that's not too pretentious. Uh, one thing would never have happened, is that these doors would never have been left open, but for dramatic purposes, leave them open, because it gives great depth to the shots. This, this little corona above her bed is a, which you can see there, is a fairly accurate representation of how it was. Looking the opposite way, so here is Elizabeth and here is Philip in his dressing room. And then beyond that, you can see his bed, which is way more kind of masculine, much more rectilinear. But at the same time, it still has to be kind of a character so that you recognize it when, when he's not there. Building a set like this, you know that it's gonna be cut within other locations that are more, if you like, real. So. Part of the challenge is to make yours real so that nobody notices that. You want yours to be real. So any of these doors could be fitted into any of those houses. So we've made things as real as possible. No, it's out of the question, sir. Why? We have a strict schedule as part of an official tour. One of the first things I ever did about four years ago was, was go on a tour of the Real Britannia, which is moored in dry dock in Edinburgh. Our VFX department went up there, sent up a drone in order to record the shape and the size of Britannia and to see what I could improve upon for dramatic purposes. The officers mess on the Royal Yacht Britannia, which is the boat on which Philip has done his world tour, has left Elizabeth behind, has left his entire family behind. So the key things here are the fan, and the low ceiling, we've got almost no distance there. You can see that there's barely any headroom above that tall man's head. And one thing I did with this as well, and I think it's perceptible in this shot, but I made it deliberately boat shaped so that um, this wall here is much narrower in this direction, which I think reminds everybody that they're on a boat when they're actually on a soundstage. The camera sometimes picks it up, but even if it doesn't, you're reminded you're on a boat by low ceilings and, uh, and, a, and pointy walls. This scene is from episode four, uh, when Tony and Margaret meet, Tony Armstrong Jones and Margaret, Tony, her future husband. Tony Armstrong Jones, we know, I did forensic research into his studio. He likes to shoot using daylight, but you can't do a studio without sticking in a few lamps. So we put in the lamps in order, really, just to say photo studio, because I think you, can't, you can never do a photo studio either without referencing um, Antonioni's blow up. 
So you'll see that Tony Armstrong Jones is pretty much wearing what David Hemmings wore in Blow Up. The other thing we wanted to do very much was to isolate Margaret. So there is this big white screen behind her and you can see that she is kind of isolated within it and she's surrounded by none of the um, things that she's normally surrounded by and none of the things that she expects to be surrounded by. Some of the photographs on the wall to avoid copyright issues are by me. Just there. <laughs> there. Part of the research told us that this light panel was something that Tony Armstrong Jones actually owned and actually used. And it's something that we built there for and um, we'll be carrying on using. We still own it. Everything that you see is absolutely of the period, if not earlier than. And this is the little detail that we thought was the little royal detail that would make her feel at home. And it was where she sat immediately, this period chair. It's kind of like a shabby chic version of what you'd find in uh, Buckingham Palace. I'm not allowed to talk about season three, but when we get to season three, you'll see that this remains a constant. Placing our new actors in a familiar environment, I think will kind of aid the storytelling and uh, you will know that you're in familiar territory with, albeit with unfamiliar faces.